on, feel free to go on to the chat at the bottom and just say hi. And I'll know that you're here. And we are going to get our Saturday morning groove on now. Yeah. So yesterday I had a plan in place for this class and it was honestly, I'm just going to be upfront with you. It was, it was quite serious. It was talking about everything that's going on. And all of a sudden I was like, you know what? We need a break. We just need a break from it all. And I don't want people to tune in tomorrow and let me just talk about the coronavirus and everything that's going on. We do need a break. And so today we are going to enjoy movement and stillness and playfulness. And I think that's important because a lot of us, um, it's been a while perhaps since we have felt a sense of lightheartedness. And, and it is hard in this time to to feel that when we know that so many people are suffering, but it's really important to our survival to remember that play is a state of mind. It's not really an activity. So many of you know, my dear mother passed away just a few months ago and I miss her so much. And she, um, one of the things I loved about her is she was such a bright, positive spirit. She was playful. She was humorous. She was witty. And it got her through a lot of really difficult times in her life. And that's something that I learned from her. Like she found herself at age 35. So picture this. She was 35 and became a widow with six children to raise by herself. I was the youngest. And I just remember we always had playfulness and laughter and music and dance and and she was just very witty. And I know lots of times now looking back that she was going through a very challenging time raising six children. But I really appreciate that she was able to bring that sense of levity and lightheartedness into our world. And so times can get heavy. There may be a little heavy right now, a little serious, a little scary. And we need a way to lay down this this lay down the bricks, I call it, lay down the heaviness. And we're going to use our practice to do that today. So I think of play or playfulness, it's not, it's not a luxury, it's a necessity. And there's even lots of scientific researchers, a great book by Dr. Stuart Brown. He has researched the benefits of play. And he even says there's evidence that in our society, we have a play deficit just as much as we have a sleep deficit. So play invigorates our soul, it stimulates our brain, it enhances those feel-good chemicals and hormones in our body, and it boosts our immune system. So as adults, sometimes we hear the word play and we think, mm, I can't play, that was, that's for children. But those that can stay lighthearted and playful stay young at heart. So let's just have fun today. And you know what? You're in your own house, so you can be silly and no one can even see you, right? So we're going to begin. I'm going to go back to my mat and we'll center from there. And I just invite you to let your brain unwind today. Let your heart like open up a little. We've all been, we're in a shutdown right now. So let's open up. Let's find a way to open ourselves up a little bit. So I'm going to move on back and we'll get started. And I'm gonna grab my glasses so I can see. All right, so come on into your seat. We'll just take a moment to center. If, if you have a blanket or something to lift your pelvis, we know that that helps the comfort of our back. So just let yourself be comfortable. And then let your hands rest on your thighs, turn down. Take a moment just to feel the shape, the architecture of your body. We'll think of, call your body the playground this morning. And if you think about it, as we were growing as children, as we were developing, movement was one of the first things that we did when we were playing, just moving in different ways. This just will feel innately normal, or perhaps it will be a reminder of, wow, I used to move even freer when I was first exploring my body. So let your eyes close and just in stillness and quiet, let's take three deep breaths. 
Inhaling through your nose, open the mouth and sigh it out. Again, inhale nose, exhale out. I think all 40 of us are breathing together. Inhale, exhale. Tilt your head to the left. So let your ear fall towards your left shoulder. Receive a deep breath in here. And sigh it out through the mouth. Bringing the head back to center and tilt it the opposite direction. Receive a full breath in. Release it out. And lifting your head back center. Pausing here. Let's take a moment to feel your feet, your legs, your pelvis. And as if you had a remote control that would release them, press that imaginary button in your mind and just feel like, boom, your pelvis get heavy. Let's take a few moments in quiet here. Your mind is like a snow, one of those little snow globes that you turn upside down. So just imagine that you have turned it right side up again and all the chatter and busy thinking mind start to settle down to the bottom of the globe. Feeling the breath, maybe feeling it in your rib cage, expanding like doors of the ribs opening and closing. And take a moment just to feel yourself in the comfort of your own home, surrounded by familiar things. Maybe your pet is there with you. Maybe you're doing yoga with a loved one. What a blessing it is this morning to be able to be together and to practice through the airwaves. I invite you to join your hands in front of your heart as you bow, just acknowledging that blessing. May we feel a sense of upliftment, of lightheartedness through this practice this morning. And then maybe we can take that and bring it out into the world. People need a little extra sense of lightheartedness and love and playfulness right now. It's very healing. We ask that this practice be infused with grace. And then please lift your head, release your hands and let the eyes come open. And I invite you to come to a standing position as we start today. Move your blankets off to the side, clear anything else out of your way, and come up to the front of your mat. So I'm wondering, not that you need to see my face, because if you just see what's happening and you hear me, that's probably fine. But from my computer, I look really dark, like you can't see me. And maybe it's because there's light coming from the windows. If someone could chat to me and just say, you look dark, maybe I'll shut those shades and it might lighten it up a little bit. And it's okay if, you know, if I see somebody chat. Oh, we can see you. Okay, thanks. All right, not that you need to see my mug, but just in case. So we're gonna start by bringing your arms at your sides, shoulders towards the ears with an inhale. So bring them up, inhale, and then exhale, drop them. <sighs> inhale. Exhale, drop. One more time. Inhale. Exhale, drop. Now take your left arm and circle it forward. Bring it up and then turn your body as you watch your hand and circle back behind you. We're going to do that two more times left side. Inhale, reach high. Start to turn, twist, and open as you look back. And arm just circles right on through. One more time. Up. 
around and through. Let's do the other side, right arm up. Really reach high and around. Even though this is a circular motion, there's still an extending all the way through it. And last one, inhale up, circle and down. And then slide your fingers together. Press your hands forward. Draw your chin down towards your chest and pause here. Pause as you breathe. And opening the back door of your heart here, the upper back gets so stiff. And then stretch your arms up towards the ceiling. Rotate your palms upward and just reach nice and high. Oh, lift your ribs up away from your hips. And then lean to your left. Lean over to the left. Breathing as you hold. Inhale back to center and over to the opposite side. And then coming back to center, I'm going to slowly open your arms in this nice slow motion circle and then bend your knees and bring your fingertips down to the floor. So you're in a bent knee position, fingertips touching the floor, or certainly you can bring a block in front of you. Push your thighs and hips way, way, way back. And now stretch your belly, chest, and head forward. So you're going to lengthen long. So it seems like your lower body is moving back and everything from the navel up is moving forward. Really anchor down through the four corners of your feet. Make sure they're straight. And then from here, put your hands on your hips. Please roll your shoulders up onto your back and slowly come up to standing. And now interlace the hands behind your back. Push the knuckles into your back and keep your elbows bent, please. Pull your shoulders back, lift up through your heart. Let's take two full breaths here, just filling up the cavity of the chest with your breath. And now bend your knees again. This time as you come down, lay your chest on your thighs and then let your head drop. Let it drop. And if you'd like to stretch the shoulders, extend your arms on up. And if you that bothers your shoulders, just keep the hands on your low back. So let your head move side to side. Move out some of that tension. And just remember, I'll keep reminding you to breathe. And then release your hands. Touch down to the mat wherever you are and step on back to a downward facing dog. Our first virtual dog of the morning. And as always, I invite you to move with curiosity here. Think about, I'm going to give you all permission to be five today. You can be a five year old. No responsibilities, just moving, playing. So pedal your dog out, liberate your dog, take him off the leash. As you're bending the knees, whatever leg is straight, so right now my right leg is straight, push the right hip back a little further. So just really push back farther. And then when the left leg is straight, push the left hip way, way back. And then take a moment to lower your knees down, coming to child's pose, big toes touch, knees wide. And sitting on back, let your forehead come down to the mat. And just take a moment there in child's pose, bowing to yourself. And then rise, come all the way up, bring your hands back under your shoulders, please. And start to move in a big circle. So don't overthink it, just let yourself get wild and crazy as you move around, stirring up some of that stagnant energy. Maybe you've been sitting on the couch a lot. I know we have watching Netflix. I've been telling Russ, we're getting Netflix butts. We gotta move around more. Now reverse your circle and circle it all the way. Big circle like you're stirring up.
and stopping in the middle from here. Extend your right leg straight back. Point the toes down towards the floor and then in the core, just activate and draw up. When you're ready, float the left arm forward and holding here, looking down at the front part of your mat so you keep your neck long. You might see me looking up a lot because I have my notes here of where we're going, my cheat sheet. And then bring that back in. Extend your left leg back, draw up through the abdomen, and then right arm comes out. And just looking at the front of the mat so the neck stays long. Breathing, holding. And bring it on back. Take your hands forward up your shoulders again. Please lift to your second down dog. And this time, let your knees bend. And just start to bounce the knees. Just bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Shaking out, you might feel some reverberation here in your low back and your hamstrings. It's nice to kind of, and maybe bounce a little faster. Bounce, bounce, bounce like you're on a trampoline. Ding, ding, ding. And then stopping and then just lift your hips nice and high. Oh, big long stretch. You know, when you see your dogs stretch, they do it with such fullness. Like they don't stretch 50%, they stretch 120%. They give it their all. And now let's take your right leg, inhale, lift it up and extend it and pause at the top. And exhale, lightly tap your toe down. Do that two more times. Inhale, lift on up. Exhale, lower down. Now, anytime you need to take a child's pose or a rest, just do that. Extend on up and release down. Lower your knees to the mat between sides. Let's take a thread the needle. So take your left arm through, come down onto your sh uh, the shoulder and left side of your head. I'm pausing here, just inviting a nice twist into the body into the spine. Maybe move your hips a little to the left. And then please lift up. Coming back to downward facing dog and we'll lift the left leg slowly three times. So first establish your foundation of your hands. Bend your knees, lift your pelvis. And now when you're ready, with your breath, inhale the leg up. Hold your inhale. And then exhale, lightly tap it down. Inhale up. Hold and savor your inhale. Exhale down. Third and last one. Inhale, reach. Exhale, lower. Coming down to your knees again. Now take your right arm through for thread the needle, coming down onto the right side of your head. I'm just pausing there. Enjoying the stillness just as much as the movement. They're both necessary. And feeling the breath come and go. And then lifting back up. Coming to downward facing dog. And then please walk your hands back to your feet, pausing in a forward bend. Let your head release, even shake it out a little. Again, you could put a block in front of you here. If the legs are feeling a little stiff this morning, just grab a block. And now from here, bend your knees, put your hands on your thighs this time, hands on your thighs, and lift up part way. So we're going to hold right here in this position. I like to enthuse my legs because we're all, want, I think we all want to be strong. And we can work in a way that makes us strong as we're doing yoga. So it's not just about stretching and flexibility. We know this, right? We want to get strong at the same time. If you look at your feet straight ahead, hug your feet and shins towards each other. You'll feel the whole inseam of your leg awaken and get stronger. And that's often a weak spot for many of us. 
Then with that strength, push your seat back a little and slightly tilt the pelvis up so you get a gentle lumbar curve. And then lift your chest slightly. And just hold here. Are your feet and legs still active? You just ask yourself, and they might start to get tired. That means you're working them, you're strengthening. And then from here, we're gonna round into a cat pose. So take your chest back, your sternum back, round. Oh, it feels so good on your spine. And then go the opposite. See if you can keep your legs strong as you do this. And when we keep the legs and the pelvis stable and strong, it gives the spine permission to be freer. So extending back into cow pose, looking up with your inhale. Exhale, round when you're ready, slowly into cat pose. And do that one more time. Inhale into cat, cow, excuse me, get my animals mixed up. And exhale in to cow, cat. <laughs> and then stand all the way up, awesome. Take your arms, bring your palms together, and then press your hands firmly together. From here, come back into a little chair position. I'm gonna twist, I'm gonna mirror you, so twist to your left, which means I'll go to my right, but twist to your left, and come into side prayer arms. So you're bringing your arm on the upper left thigh, and then just start to turn and twist, and. Maybe look up if that's comfortable. Deep breath. And then reach down, touch the mat, straighten your legs. Now we're gonna roll up like a raggedy and raggedy Andy. So just let your arms dangle, shake them a little as you roll all the way up, tall spine. And then again, bring the hands together, press them together. Bend the knees, twist to your other side now, and pausing here inside prayer twist. You can look straight or you can turn and look up towards your ceiling. Keep the breath nice and fluid. And then reaching down to the ground, pause. And if you're not at the front of your mat, just make your way up there. And from here, stepping your right leg back to a deep lunge. Pause and deep lunge. Lengthen forward through your spine, long, long spine. And then lower your back knee to the mat. Inhale, stretch your arms on up to Anjane Asana. And exhale, pull your arms down to a W position. So, your palms rotate outward, pinky fingers rotate back. Feel your shoulder blades come onto your back here. They merge towards one another. Yeah, and then just breathing, opening, lifting up your playful heart. And then from here, we're gonna come forward like you're doing a cat pose, round and touch back down. Lift up, step back, downward facing dog. A little bend in your knees, and that will give you freedom to lift your seat higher, to find that lumbar curve that's so healthy. If you sit a lot or lift a lot, the back gets rounded there a lot. So we want to bring it back to its healthy state. Come forward now to plank pose with an inhale, pause and fold. You can always lower your knees, so this might be a nice option. And then lift back to downward facing dog. Take a deep breath here. And once again, plank pose, holding. And then push back to downward facing dog. And now step your right leg forward. Take your time to, let's pause here and lengthen, long spine. Just establishing a good bend in your front leg, the knee is over the ankle. And then from here, stretch your back knee down and come up with both arms on Janae Asana. Breathing, stretching, opening. 
And then come into W arms. Now last time I didn't give this cue, but we're just adding on little by little. You can feel the shoulder blades on your back here. But what about here in the front? Have you lost your power? Have you disconnected by jutting your ribs out? See if you can sweetly collect your ribs back into your body. Yeah, feel a little stronger there, a little more put together, a little more connected. And now from here, come up and round over, reach down, touch the floor, and step back to downward facing dog. So through this time, as we're teaching online classes, all of the classes are what we call mixed level. And so that means we're just gonna give options and you, it's like a smorgasbord, a buffet. You get to choose the options that feel right for you and customize your, your class, your practice. So lower your knees down, coming back to child's pose here. Remember the pauses are just as important as the movement. Let your head rest on your hands and take a few moments there to breathe consciously. And then lifting your head, you're gonna to go to diagonal child's pose. So walk your hands to the right. Come on to the tips of your fingers. Uh, we call it making little tents or spider fingers sometimes. Hands are shoulder width apart and then let your head bow in a diagonal child's pose. And press your hips over and back to the left. So you might feel a little extra stretch or sensation on the left side of your body. And I like to really lift my arm bones up, armpits, shoulders, upper arms, elbows, really rise and let the head go down. And then lifting up, we'll walk across to the second side, please. So come on over, diagonal child's pose, let the head bow and gently guide the hips over to the right a bit. And coming back to center, place the hands and come into an all fours position. So your wrists are under your shoulders. And from here, extend your, let's see which way it's going to be easier. Extend your right leg straight back, right leg back, and then move your left foot over to the left a little, just swing it over. And we're going to turn and open now to a knee plank. So extend your top arm over and just reach really long. You might feel your torso drift back a bit if that's available to you. Just open and stretch and don't forget to breathe. Oh, you can make sound effects. You can grunt, moan, hiss, bark. Here at home, no one can hear you. And then circle around, nice slow circle. <clears throat> excuse me, down, <clears throat> and second side now. Extend your left leg back, <clears throat> swivel your right foot out, and then start to open. <clears throat> I'm gonna get a drink of water here. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> open left arm over your head. <clears throat> and lean back, oh, it feels so good. And coming back around. Oh, come down to your forearms for a moment. Interlace your fingers. And then take a moment to see that your elbows are underneath your shoulders. About the same width of your shoulders. Curl your toes under. So this is going to wake up the core here. Just a really tiny movement. I want you just to lift your knees barely off the floor. Look straight down at your fists. Lift the knees just a tiny bit off the floor. And simply hold. Purposely draw the ribs or collect the ribs back up into your body. And notice how low your knees are to the ground. I actually feel more sensation, more challenge if I lower my knees and then release down, good job. 
For a moment, let your feet relax, let your head bow, and put a curve out in your lumbar. And then lifting your head on up, bring your hands to downward facing dog. So they're a little forward of your shoulders, lift the hips nice and high. And then take your time and walk your hands back to your feet. Heels will ground, you come right back to a forward fold. Take a moment here. Really press your feet down with intention into the mat. So there's a downward pushing so the pelvis then can feel a rebound and rise. Bring the hands onto your hips, lift your shoulders and rise slowly all the way up. How are you doing? Are you feeling a little more alive on the Saturday morning? So Elvis is in the house. He's coming around. I'm gonna do the Elvis dog here in a little bit, so get ready. So just in case you don't know, the Elvis moves, I must remind you. So you're gonna take your feet wide and let your left leg drop in. So just drop it in and you can say, thank you. Thank you very much. And then switch to the other side. I know you're rolling your eyes at me right now and that's okay. Let your left leg drop in and release. And then you can get really fancy like or not. But that's where we're going with our legs in downward dog. So it's coming up, be ready. So come to the front of your mat, bring your hands to your heart center. Inhale, reach your arms on up. Exhale, slow forward fold. Inhale, half lift, so you can slide the hands up just right below your knees, lengthen your spine, and exhale, bow, and release. Please step your right leg back again, pause. Lower your back knee to the ground. We're gonna add a twist this time. So put the weight onto the right arm and bring the left arm up towards the ceiling. Breathing here. And then slowly come back down. Lift the back leg, coming to crescent pose now. So I know many of you might be on carpet at home and that can make a difference in your, your balance, just that little bit. So you might wanna move your back foot to the right a bit and come up to crescent pose. And from here, bring your arms above you, reaching nice and tall. And then exhale, come back down. Step back to a plank pose. You're welcome to lower your knees and then take a deep breath in. Exhale, lower down slowly. Tops of the feet go down, roll the shoulders up and back and then gently rise into your first cobra. Exhale, brings you back down. Toes curl under, push back downward facing dog. Hips nice and high. And here it comes, the Elvis dog. Step your feet a little bit wider to the outer edges of your mat. I wish we could play music, but we can't. There's copyright laws, so we can't play music. I'd have on um, like jailhouse rock or something. So you're gonna take your hands a little bit closer together, maybe an inch between your thumbs, and then let your right knee fall in like Elvis. Keep your right knee falling in. Shift the weight to your right arm, and then it's up to you. You can lift the left arm or just stay down with the elbows legs and just reach up and back. And release down. And let's do the other side. Bend the left knee in, elbows dog. Shift the weight to the left hand. And you can do this on your knees, maybe you can make up a variation. Heck, I can't see you do anything you want. So elbows dog here. And come on back. Good job. I can hear you right now. My mom's favorite song, one of them was Blue Suede Shoes, so I can hear her singing that. So right now, let's step the right leg forward, lower your back knee down, and let's go to that twist again. So reach your right arm up, breathing. Oh, open through the chest, the shoulders. And release back down. We'll come to crescent pose. If it helped you last time to move your foot to the left a little, please do that. And then come all the way up. 
Establish your balance and extend the arms up as you're ready. Rise and maybe lean back a little as you bend deep into the front leg. And slowly touch down. Come on forward to forward bend. I'm going to check the time here, see how we're doing. Good. And release the head, shake it out. Inhale, stretch the arms, come all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, the arms back up again. Exhale, open and forward fold. Hands to the thighs, slow half lift. Exhale, bow, and release. So step the right leg back again. This time we're going right up into crescent pose. So if you'd rather do the knee to the ground, go there. So that's a great option, knee to the ground. If you want to go to crescent, keep it up, and then come all the way up. So imagine now that you're on the playground, and you're reaching up with your arms, and you're holding on to the monkey bars. So you're up here, and you're grabbing onto something. So you can feel maybe more length, more stretch as you energetically reach up and grab. So keep holding onto the monkey bars so there's an upward energy as you slowly bend your back leg. Bend your back leg slowly, 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 slowly dip it down and touch it to the mat. Good job. From here, bring your hands together. And we did this earlier, side prayer twists. So turn to your left and put the hands on, on top of each other, or you could also go back to this twist if that felt better. So either one. And then coming back to center. So from here, you can either just lift your back leg with your hands down, or you can come back and retrace your tracks and go right back up to crescent pose. So that's your choice and reach up high. Reach down, touch the mat. Let's make our way back to a plank pose. Take your time there, find shoulders over wrists and back of the head lifts. Deep breath in, exhale, lower down. Shoulders roll up, inhale, lift a cobra. Exhale, lower. Push back, downward facing dog. Hips are nice and high. And then please step your left leg forward. Take your time. Again, you're welcome to lower the back knee down if you'd like. Actually, we were just on this side, weren't we? Step your right leg forward. Sorry about that. You probably already did that. Now you can lower your back knee down if you'd like, or come up to crescent pose. Take your time, find your balance, and then reach up and grab a hold of monkey bars. Remember how you used to hang on those and swing around? So keep reaching upward like you're pressing your knuckles towards the ceiling as you explore that slow bend of the back knee. Slowly, slowly, slowly coming down. Oh, nice. Bring the hands together into side prayer twist, or option two would be open. Oh, yogi's choice there. Nice, full, cleansing breath. And then reaching down. You can either touch the floor to lift your back leg, or come up and retrace your tracks right back up to crescent pose, opening up, and slowly reach down. Touch the ground and step forward to the forward bend. Sweep the arms on out, come all the way up to standing, hands to heart center, and take a moment here, close your eyes, and just pause and feel. Feel your breath, Feel your heartbeat. Feel your body delighting in movement. 
Movement is medicine, I always say. We have within us this inner pharmacy, all of these chemicals and hormones. And when we move in these healthy ways, it turns them on to our benefit. So if your mood has been feeling low lately, move more. Inhale, stretch your arms all the way up and exhale forward fold, release down. One last time here, we're gonna step back with the right leg. Pause in the right leg, spin the back heel down. We'll come up to warrior two. So bring the arms on out and <clears throat> bend the front leg. So in the name of playfulness tonight, today, I guess Elvis is still in the house. So I'm gonna invite you to do something wild and fun and crazy. It's up to you whether you chose to go down that route or not. So make a fist with your back hand. Remember how Elvis would play his guitar <laughs> and he would be like, Vroom, vroom. So you get to do that if you want to circle. If you need to make it look purposeful, you can, or you can go fast, actually really nice for your shoulder joint. Yeah. And you can picture him out on the stage in Vegas, C, C, C rider. And then from here, stop it and come into reverse warrior. Oh yeah. Lunge deep into the front leg, make it more interesting and breathe everyone. And then we're going to cartwheel on down to the mat. Please step back, downward facing dog. Pause there. Deep breath. Take a child's pose if you want, or just remain in dog. Or you can go through a vinyasa if you want, which means go to plank, cobra, and back to dog. <clears throat> and I'll invite you to step your right leg forward. Spin your back foot down, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and then come all the way up. Warrior two on this side here, Vadrasana two. Just receive a breath and on an exhale, settle. Back leg is strong and lifting and anchored. And now here comes your back arm. However you wanna do it, you can go, I like to go this way, over and down. You can go forward or you could go backwards. Whatever feels good for you. However you want to play your guitar, just circle it, circle it. And then stop it on your back leg and open up to reverse warrior. Lunging deep. Oh. Breathing full. And out we go, come all the way up, touch down. And step back downward facing dog. Deep breath here. Please lower your knees down, child's pose, and sitting back, bring the hands under your forehead and rest there for a moment. And just feel, feel your body maybe getting warmer. And now from here, lifting on up, curl the toes under and lift your hips. Once again, we're gonna walk the hands back to a forward bend. <clears throat> this time, bend your knees, bring your hands onto your thighs. We did this earlier. I'm gonna invite you to hug your feet and shins inward towards each other. And then push your seat back and up a little so you have a lumbar curve. Lift your chest a little, and right here, collect your ribs back into you. So you have all the pieces put together. Unification, that's what yoga is about. Union, right? Mind, body, breath. We bring the body together, we're stronger. And then from here, bring your arms out into the W pose. Palms turn outward, pinkies back. And just sit for a little bit. Let your legs get nice and warm and strong. It's like turning on the crock pot. Takes a while. Just hold here. And now we're gonna have some fun with this. You can just stay here or bring your hands down and watch. I'm gonna go slap, slap, clap. Slap, slap, clap. Do it with me. Slap, slap, clap. Watch out, something else is coming. Slap, slap, clap. And now you're gonna lift the heels. 
slap, slap, clap, slap, slap, clap. Heels go down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. Are your legs barking yet? Down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. Last time, hold up. Oh my, you can go down a little lower if you want and bring it back up. And then heels down, hallelujah, stretch up, and release back down. Good job. All right, this time to balance. You are in your own home, I'm assuming. You can hold on to a wall if you want, or a chair or something, or not. So you decide. Maybe you have to move a little bit now to a wall. So we're, we're going to go into a standing balance. We'll do different stages. So if you would, please. Stand on your left leg and just bring your right leg up in front of you. Flex the foot and then interlace your hands securely on the back of your right hamstring. Roll your shoulders back and push down strongly with your leg into your hand. And then from here, your hips, your butt, push it back a little. Even pull your right leg back into the socket so there's a drawing back sensation. Good. And you can stay here, or you can explore straightening the right leg. Straightening. Either way, bent or straight, just see where you're at. You can stay here, or you can hold the leg with your left hand and play the air guitar. Dun, 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 dun. And you can do that. Fun, huh? <laughs> and then bring it back in and release. I spent a lot of time alone as a child playing with by myself. So I'm easily amused. Maybe you have too. Maybe you've been spent a lot of time as a latchkey child. So we're going to bend the knee, bring the left leg on up and recreate that playfulness on the second side. So you're going to press your left thigh down and pull it back into the socket. Feels like your bottom is moving back because it is. And then from there, then stay here and just work on your balance here. Hold a wall if you need to. And then extend the leg if you choose. Keep pushing the left thigh down, guide it down as you lift the heart up. Holding and stay there with two hands holding the leg or hold it with your right hand. Just have fun with this. If you fall over, who really cares? Just see where you're at. It's harder when I turn and look at you. Do your old dee, 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 maybe some ACDC, and bring it on in. All right, good job, you guys. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, we've got a little bit of time here standing. So come on back to another balance pose. So I'll give you options. You can hold a wall and go into frog pose where you reach back and find the heel, find the foot, and bring it on in, and roll the shoulder back. Or you can go into dancer pose. So you choose wall or no wall. Dancer, you hold the foot on the inside. So you're reaching to the big toe side of your foot, palms facing out. And then put a little cushion in your standing leg. Left arm comes forward. Remember, you might be on carpet, so give yourself some grace. It might be more challenging. Start to kick your foot back and up. And keep your ribs drawing into you. And just explore a little by little. Stop along the way. Keep kicking and breathing. Have fun with it. Dancer. And slowly come on in. That was fun. One more side. Again, tree po or tree pose. Frog pose. You can come here. A nice stretch to the quad, or you can go into dancer, standing on your right foot. Palm turns out with the thumb up. Hold on. And just take a moment, settle, draw the ribs back, and start to slowly, slowly explore. The back knee might flare out to the left, hug it into the midline, that helps. And your foot's kicking back strong and up. And 
and then slowly come on out. Very good. Let's go down to the floor. So come on down and to your seat. So from here, take your legs straight out in front of you, <coughs> excuse me, and cross your left ankle over your right thigh. And your foot is nice and flexed, and then bring your hands behind you on the floor. Bend your right leg a little bit, or if you need more sensation, you can bring the foot back more. So find what feels right for you, and then lift your chest on up. Ah, I'm just pausing here, feeling some opening in the left hip. You might even move your legs side to side. So remember I said at the beginning that play is a state of mind rather than an activity. But there are many activities that spark that playfulness in us. And you might think back to when you were a child, maybe just playing out in nature, kicking a pile of leaves or splashing in water. And so it might just be a moment in your day where you do something that's playful, that just starts to brighten your mood. Maybe you play a joke on someone. Go ahead and switch. <laughs> Cross your right ankle over your left. Yesterday, I was sitting in my office, all serious at the computer. Go ahead and bend your left leg. And in front of my house pulls up this little convertible. And in the, convert the convertible is decorated. And in the convertible was a person in a bunny suit. Uh, she wasn't driving, of course, her husband was. And it was a friend of mine who dressed up like an Easter bunny. And they drove from house to house and delivered presents a little bottle of wine actually and it was just so cute and playful and it really added a spark of joy to my day so maybe you can do something like that so holding here and now we'll release moving on to our backs we'll start to really wind down now I can play with you guys all day, but I'm sure you have things to do, adult things to do. So bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself some love, a little hug. Ah. Hear your body whispering to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bring your left foot to the floor, extend your right leg up and just hold the back of your leg and push your hamstring into your hand, so push that way with your leg, fill up your hands. And we're gonna press for strongly for a count of five. So everyone kick forward now. Five, four, three, two, one. And then just release up a little bit and bring the knee towards your opposite shoulder, or towards your right shoulder. And then again, bring the leg back, press it forward strongly. Five, four, three, two, one, and bring the leg back. And now cross the ankle over the left thigh. You can stay right here, maybe that's plenty, or bring the leg towards your chest. Relax your shoulders and keep a steady breath. and then release down to the floor. Right foot comes down, take a moment here, hands on your belly and really bask in your breath, two deep breaths. So inhale, let the belly rise, exhale, release. Inhale, rise, exhale, release. And now lift the left leg up Extend the leg, interlace the hands, and push the thigh forward. So if you're really pressing strong, your low back should arch. You should get a lumbar curve as you press for five, four, reach up through your heel, flex your foot, two, one, and then bend the knee. It's coming a little more diagonally over towards your shoulder. And again, press forward, five, four, three, two, really strong, one, and release and bend the knee over. 
And now just draw, or bring the leg across. You might choose to stay here. For some, this is really nice stretch for the hip. Or you can choose to bring the legs towards you. And to Sukhi Randrasana, eye of the needle. Be still or maybe a gentle sway. Let's notice that you're now deliberately starting to slow your breath down. They say we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. I love that phrase. I think it's so true. And release your feet to the floor. Bring the soles of your feet together now as you open in Supta Baddha Konasana or butterfly and see if you can create a little pocket of space under your low back. Hands come and rest on the abdomen and let the belly be very soft. <sighs> it's that time where we're moving into sweet surrender and the state of being more receptive. So just pause here. Feel your natural breath. Pausing for two more breaths. And then slowly draw the legs together <clears throat> and from here see if we're going towards shavasana now so if you do want to put on a sweater or something take a moment to do that and i know because friends have told me when they're practicing at home that they tend to want to ditch out of the shavasana but please remember this is the most important posture of all even for a few minutes it's like the dessert at the end. So, and it's so what our nervous systems need right now. We need pockets of deep rest. So please just gift yourself the time of Shavasana. Shoulders roll under you, lift the chest and let your arms release. And then let the legs move out to the opposite corners of the mat. And find the eyes, draw the lids closed. And again, even for a few minutes here, if you can just give yourself an opportunity to fully release. The world can wait. This is your time. If you happen to be looking at the screen, I'm going to be rising to hold virtual space for you. You just remain in Shavasana, whatever position is comfortable. As the eyes close, you go from your outer world to your inner world and just start to notice your inner environment. What is your breath like? Is it slowing down? Can you feel a pulse in your body anywhere? Maybe the heart is beating or I always like to feel in the center of the palm of my hand, there's a pulse, a really sweet pulse. If you tune in, the hands are extensions of the heart. Let this time, this practice, this playfulness sink into you, into your mind and your heart and your body. When we play, our brain works better. We're more optimistic and more creative. Let the back of your head release. 
In the back of your neck, release. In the back of your shoulders and arms, just feel yourself like you're laying in warm sand and you're starting to sink. All the muscles of the back and the spine just release backwards. The pelvis heavy, sinking. Let that sensation move down your legs. All the way to the heels and feel your heels sinking in warm sand. So the entire back of your body is through these, the imagination, the strength of your mind. You can picture it and invite it to release deeper. And begin to release the front of your body into the back of your body. So feel the muscles of the face soften and just sink back a little. The front of the throat, feel the chest, just release slightly downward towards the back. The abdomen soft and just naturally drawing in with each breath and out the front of the pelvis releasing into the back of the pelvis and the front of the legs releasing into the back of the legs all the way down to the tips of your toes and resting in this pocket of stillness and silence for a few minutes i'll continue to hold space meet back up with you in just a few minutes. Keep receiving the gift of stillness. In this last minute of rest, give yourself permission to release just a bit deeper. Maybe you've still been holding on. Sigh with an exhale. It's okay to lay it down. Now bringing your awareness back to your breathing, just invite a deep breath into your lungs. Feel the aliveness within you. Maybe more alive than you were an hour ago. I know I certainly feel way more alive. And start to wiggle your fingers, your toes, stretch your arms if you wish. And again, to bend your knees towards your chest as you're ready. Rolling to your right side. And pressing yourself on up to a seat. As we bring closure to 
this beautiful practice this morning. Feels so good to be playing together again in community. So once you have your seat, I invite you to close your eyes. I'm just going to leave you with these very wise words from Dr. Stuart Brown, who his book is called Play, and he spent his life researching the benefits of play. He says, I have found that remembering what play is all about and making it part of our daily lives are probably the most important factors in being a fulfilled human being. The ability to play is critical, not only to being happy, but also sustaining social relationships and being a creative, innovative person. If that seems to be a big claim, consider the, what the world would be like without play. It's not just an absence of games or sports. Life without play is a life without books, without movies, art, music, jokes, dramatic stories. Imagine a world with no flirting, no daydreaming, no comedy, no irony. Such a world would be a pretty grim place to live. In a broad sense, play is what lifts people out of the mundane. I sometimes compare play to oxygen. It's all around us, yet goes mostly unnoticed or unappreciated until it is missing. Just join the hands together in front of your heart. Bowing in that direction, honoring yourself. And the Leela in you, Leela in Sanskrit, in yoga language means divine play. Honor that in you. Thank you for coming out and playing with me this morning. Namaste. And then lifting your head, release your hands, and let your eyes pop open, and the world is waiting for you today. Spread some of that playfulness, joy. Um, we need it now, so spread your love.